Hello guys, I am Geeta Thapar. Today we are going to do the last part of our series on acids, bases and salts. We are going to talk about salts, their uses. Today's uh, session is going to be all about learning real world uses about uh, salts. So let's begin. We begin with the most abundant salt that we have available, sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is also known as common salt. It's the salt that you use for cooking. Uh, Gandhi uh, took a pinch of the salt from the sea. We throw a salt over our shoulders for good luck and it has significance across cultures. It is found everywhere on earth and it's no surprise that we use this salt for a lot of other uh, chemicals, a lot of other salts that we make. Um, let's see how. When we have salt, uh, mix that with water. We try to make a super saturated solution of salt and water. This is known as brine. Once we have a super saturated solution of salt and water, we pass electricity through it. Uh, as we learn in acids and bases, acids and bases combine to give you salt and water. What we have over here is salt and water. So if we pass a little bit of electricity through it, it goes back and we get an acid and a base. The base that we get is sodium hydroxide and we don't really get an acid because when we put in the two electrodes, the HCl, the acid component of this, breaks down into hydrogen and chlorine. So what we actually do get is hydrogen on one end and chlorine on the other end. Uh, this is known as a chloroalkali process because we have chlorine coming up on one end and we also have sodium hydroxide manufactured. Sodium hydroxide is further used to make other sodium salts and chlorine is actually used to make bleach. So we will be talking about bleaching powder and its applications next. Now chlorine by itself is a strong oxidizing agent. Now let me explain what that means to you. Let me break that down. Chlorine has, an, has a very high affinity. It really wants to react with hydrogen. So when you have H2O and chlorine, chlorine really wants to react with the hydrogen. It sucks the hydrogen out, leaving the oxygen by itself. Oxygen it's oxygen also is reactive so whatever material you mix water chlorine and substance x in it combines with the oxygen thereby getting oxidized so chlorine is a strong oxidizing agent it really helps other other substances combine with the oxygen uh, what we have over here what i have over here is bleaching powder okay i have a bleach uh, bleaching liquid this by the way is made by calcium hydroxide we take a salt of calcium hydroxide and we introduce uh, chlorine we pass it through chlorine gas which gives us calcium hypochlorite which is cao cl2 and we have water we have h2o uh, to show you the bleaching property of chlorine by the way let me just show this to you so i have a red litmus paper over here h if i put this in you can see that the red litmus turns blue but very soon it turns white all the color red or blue is actually broken away that's what a strong oxidizing agent does it breaks away all the bonds uh, when you have colorful compounds they're usually long compounds they, they have a lot of chains and uh, what chlorine or bleach is very good at is breaking these long chains up and that's why it loses its color to uh, to demonstrate that uh, over here i have equal quantities of water and chlorine and I'm going to put them in equal quantities of coke or uh, to see how the color changes in each of them. So if I put water, you can see that the coke has gotten lighter, it's gotten more diluted, but it hasn't really lost its color. Now if I put bleach in the same, you can see that it's actually lost its color and it becomes a lot lighter. And that's what bleach does it helps break these really long uh, compounds and that's why we use uh, bleach for a lot of different applications it's also highly basic so we use it for cleaning purposes to kill bacteria to kill germs it's often found in the bathrooms it's a strong oxidizing agent and we must always use it with caution all right next up we have sodium hydrogen carbonate which is NaHCO3 uh, it may not look like much but it is what makes our baking soda and vinegar rockets go up. It is what makes tasty cakes and yummy pakoras. We use it in pancakes. Uh, I'm going to put this in water and we can immediately see that it sort of fizzles. So sodium hydrogen bicarbonate 
is completely edible. We use it in foods whenever we want it to fluff up. So we use it in pancakes, we use it in uh, cake. We saw the fizz, that's the, that's the carbon dioxide inside it. It, complete, it releases very easily. We also, for the same purposes, we use it when we make fire extinguishers. Next up, I want to show you how it reacts with an acid. I have hydrochloric acid over here and I have some sodium hydrogen bicarbonate. Now this reacts a lot like any metal bicarbonate. If you remember from our last video, a metal bicarbonate reacts with an acid to give you carbon dioxide water and the metal salt. This carbon dioxide is used in fire extinguishers. If I put in this, you can see that it spills up again. This gas over here is carbon dioxide and we use it to extinguish fires. We use it in our baking soda and vinegar rockets and okay that was a flurry so uh, yeah remember baking soda the three uses that we have is carbon dioxide used in fire extinguishers it's also used in antacids since we can eat it and it's not as acidic as our stomach so it does help shift the pH level towards neutral and we also um, use it in foods Another very important sodium salt is sodium carbonate, uh, which is Na2CO3. This actually combines with water. Each uh, molecule of sodium carbonate combines with 10 molecules of water, giving us Na2CO3 dot 10 H2O. And this is known as washing soda now. Washing soda is used in numerous applications. First of all, it's very slippery, which tells us it's a good base, even though it's, it has a lot of basic properties, even though it is uh, a salt. Uh, it helps us clean our hands, it helps us in a lot of domestic uh, cleaning applications. It's used to make uh, uh, hard water soft. It is used in manufacture of soaps obviously and it's also used in manufacture of glass. When we speak about sodium bicarbonate combining with uh, molecules of water, it's not the only salt that does that. Uh, salts are dehydrated without the presence of water, but when you add in water, they get all sorts of different properties. To show this to you, I have over here copper sulfate. So I have some copper sulfate over here. This is wet copper sulfate. It's CuSO4.5H2O, which means it has it's holding on to five molecules of water. This copper sulfate, as you can see, it has a deep blue color. And when I heat it, there's a lot of soot deposited on the test tube because of the carbon from the flame I'm just going to clean that and you can see that towards the bottom it has converted to white I have over here some heated copper sulfate you can see the difference as it heats up and, and as it heats more right you can see in these two test tubes we actually have some water that the copper sulfate has released but to show to you that this stall is still copper sulfate, what I'm going to do is bring in some water over here and put it inside this. As soon as I put in the water, you can see that the solution regains its blue color. It regains its blue color and its copper sulfate again. So as the water evaporates out of it, it's known as dry copper sulfate. It doesn't hold on to those molecules anymore. This water is extremely important. It gives uh, a lot of salts its structure, its color, its other properties. We, we learned that washing soda, because of the water molecules that it holds on to, is basic in nature and helps us clean our hands. And is, that's why it's useful. To show, uh, we have another example coming up to show you how important this water is. Okay, so another very important soil that we use for construction, we use for all sorts of needs for us is gypsum. The rock itself is known as gypsum, the mineral. It's calcium sulfate. But when you heat it to 100 degrees Celsius, it turns powdery, just like this. This, you may have heard of, is plaster of Paris. I have a little bit of plaster of Paris over here. I'm going to mix water in it. Before I do that, let me show you what I have over here. Okay, so I have play-doh I have some clay over here and what I have done is I had a dinosaur lying around and I have inserted the dinosaur into this making a mold out of it 
so yeah that's what I have over there you can make this out of clay just flatten the clay out, clay out raise the edges and you can take anything that you want you can take a car and just put in some pressure so that it leaves this impression now we mix water and calcium sulfate or plaster of Paris once we have a mixture Right. shouldn't be quite as runny the runnier it is the easier it's going to be for you to pour it the better you're going to have your uh, final output but uh, it's going to take a lot longer to dry so something like this would easily take about 36 hours to dry and I pour it over here let me clean that up once this dries up after about 24 to 36 hours what you should have is a fossil of a dinosaur so after we let our calcium sulfate uh, mixed with water harden for about 24 to 36 hours we should have something like this uh, POP is used all over at false ceilings for a lot of structures it's quite strong but it's definitely not as strong as cement and that's it that wraps up our chapter for salts those are the important salts that you need to know about make extra care to understand how they are produced, how they are manufactured, that we, we, we know the equations. Follow the salts, the cations and anions in the equations and it's actually just common sense, it will just click to you. See the components and uh, place them where you think makes most sense and most likely you'll be getting the right, right mm -hmm. chemical equation. So that finishes our chapter on acids, bases and salts. Hopefully it was easy to understand and you got the gist of the chapter. Make sure you practice those chemical equations, know where the cations and anions are going and you automatically get the right equation. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll try to answer as many of them. If you have any feedback, let us know and help us like and subscribe this video. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.